This is the RAF Binbrook site, one of the RAF sites built in the expansion period in the late 1930s. The site was opened in June 1940 and remained open right up until the late 1980s. So this place has seen a lot of history from World War II all the way through to the Cold War. Today, many of the original buildings are still standing and early on in RAF Binbrook's story between 1943 and 1945, it was the home of the Royal Australian Air Force's 460 Squadron. 460 Squadron moved to Binbrook in May 1943 equipped with Lancasters. From here they took part in the Battle of Berlin, flew sorties in support of the D-Day landings and also took part in a raid of Hitler's mountain retreat in Bavaria. This year, we at His Church Charity, who are now based on the RAF Binbrook site, started taking care of the graves at nearby St Mary's Church in Binbrook Village. There's a group of 50 RAF graves within the churchyard. Some are war graves and some are the graves of those who died while serving in the RAF. Among these, the graves of seven Royal Australian Air Force men who are members of 460 Squadron. The flowers we use are regularly donated to us by Waitrose Supermarket. Images of the tended graves found their way to Australia and in turn to the current 460 Squadron and we're so excited that this connection was made. So what's the story of the 460 Squadron men who were buried in St Mary's Churchyard? On the 19th of September 1942, all seven men were part of a crew of eight aboard a Halifax. This was based at RAF Brayton, which was detailed to carry out an air firing exercise and needed to make a call first to RAF Binbrook. The aircraft overshot the aerodrome on both its first and second approaches, after which smoke was found to be pouring from the starboard outer engine, which had failed and caught fire. At 10.30 hours, while making a gentle turn to the left at 800 feet, the aircraft stalled, then spun and crashed, and all the crew members were killed. As part of Bomber Command towards the end of World War II, 460 Squadron also took part in Operation Manor. In the spring of 1945, the situation was growing ever more desperate for millions of Dutch people still under Nazi occupation. The harsh winter was causing a famine, especially in the densely populated areas. 10,000 people had already died and the rest were surviving on a diet of tulip bulbs and sugar beet. Knowing the terrible plight his countrymen were in, Prince Bernhard, exiled in London during World War II, appealed for aid to General Eisenhower and Winston Churchill, and this was thankfully granted on the 23rd of April, enabling Allied agents to begin negotiations with their German counterparts. Amazingly, an agreement was made between the Allies and the Germans that participating airplanes would not be fired upon within specified air corridors. After a test flight, which took place before the ceasefire was officially announced, the operation began in earnest with Bomber Command delivering over 6,500 tonnes of food to the starving people of Holland. 
the Royal Australian Air Force also became involved, with 21 aircraft from 460 Squadron setting out on the first of seven food drops over the Netherlands. The squadron was heavily involved in the manor drop, flying 118 Lancaster loads of food, £5,739 for each plane, which is just under three tonnes. Many of the crews donated cigarettes, chocolates and whatever they felt was a fitting contribution to those people who'd suffered so much during the German occupation. The Dutch people waved from roofs and streets and it's thought that thousands and thousands of people were saved. Operation Manor is taught in schools so everyone is aware of what happened and they are still thankful for it. Frank Lawrence, DFC, DFM, who returned to 460 Squadron as a flight commander in time to lead 460 Squadron Lancasters in the Manor Drop, agreed that his participation in Operation Manor was definitely the most emotional and rewarding experience of his entire war service. This leads us into what we at His Church are doing today, starting with an £8 Morrison supermarket voucher in 2004. We've been collecting and redistributing surplus food, clothes and supplies to those who are disadvantaged in the UK and abroad, providing creative solutions for donations with care and dignity for the recipients. As we outgrew each place we were operating from, we moved to Hangar 3 in 2007, which at the time seemed like an enormous space to fill. At the beginning of 2019, we opened a 42 pallet cold store within the hangar building and invited Frank Field to open it, who was the MP for Birkenhead at the time. And it seems fitting with this huge complex here that it's also and um, was part of Bomber Command that won Britain's freedom from, I don't want to develop the <laughs> view too far about what was going on in the continent, um, but it, they were crucial. And it's quite clear that his church is today's bomber command in trying to bomb out of existence in the kindest way possible the extent of hunger that we, ha we have in this country. Congratulations to the whole of your team for what you've achieved and it's very, very impressive to be here to see the headquarters of Bomber Command's attacks on hunger in our country. Thank you Richard and all your, your, your team. During the UK lockdown in 2020, his church didn't shut. In fact, we had to work harder to ensure the food we had stored for times of crisis could reach those vulnerable people who were self-isolating and struggling to access food, particularly after the panic buying. Welcome, thank you for joining us. I can see a, a really well-stocked warehouse behind you. Tell us what you're doing in these times. Katie, the charity say they've provided million meals, a million meals for vulnerable people, but there are still people that are in need. COVID-19 is bringing people together. These are volunteers of different faiths from different parts of the country, helping each other to help others. A Lincolnshire charity has reached its target of delivering 1.5 million meals since the coronavirus pandemic began. For services to food provision in the UK during the COVID-19 response, our charity president, Trevor Cockings, was awarded an MBE and from the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic until now, we have distributed approximately 9 million meals. In addition to the hangar, his church have acquired an H-block, the SHQ building, the guard room and the medical centre and are in the process of restoring them. In due course, we hope to open a museum covering the history of the site from every decade. We are also the custodians of two English electric lightning airframes which are undercover and have been collecting stories from lightning legends and the people who worked on them to keep those tales from RAF Binbrook alive. We were honoured to have the Scots Guards attend the opening of our SHQ building, along with many of his church's friends and partners. We've worked with them and other regiments of the British Army providing comfort parcels for troops while on deployment, 
supported charities set up to help veterans, supported community engagement projects of armed forces on missions, and provided toys for children whose parents are serving abroad at Christmas. We very much look forward to developing our partnership further as we learn more of our shared history and the sacrifices made by all those who went before us. In memory of all those who chose to go halfway around the world to fight in a war that wasn't theirs, we will remember them.